Charles Law's a law that describes the relationship between the temperature and the volume of a gas at constant pressure. It is important to note that the pressure is remaining constant because if the pressure were changing, then that would also have an effect on the temperature and the volume of the gas. Charles Law tells us that the volume of a gas is directly proportional to the temperature. What this means is that when one goes up, the other goes up as well. So if the temperature increases, the volume will also increase, and if the temperature decreases, the volume will also decrease. For example, if you have a balloon and you begin to heat it up, the balloon is going to expand. This shows that the volume of the balloon is increasing or getting bigger. And if you were to take the balloon outside on a cold day, the balloon would shrink. This is showing a decrease in volume due to the decrease in temperature. A great example of this is your car tires. When it is summer or the beginning of fall and we are experiencing warmer temperatures outside, the tires in our cars are going to look full and normal. However, when winter approaches and the temperatures get colder, our tires can begin to look flat. Oftentimes, people will think that their car tires have lost air, but in reality, they haven't. What has happened is the volume of gas in the tires has gone down because the temperatures outside have gone down. What you've experienced is Charles' law in action. The decrease in temperature also caused a decrease in the volume of gas or air in the tires. Again, this is showing the direct relationship between temperature and volume of a gas. We can represent Charles' law using a graph where we would graph the temperature and the volume. As you can see here, this graph has a positive slope, which helps to show the direct relationship between temperature and volume. When the temperature is high, the volume is also high, and when the temperature is low, the volume is also low. Again, showing the direct relationship of temperature and volume of a gas at constant pressure. As one goes up, the other goes up, and as one goes down, the other goes down. When it comes to solving gas law problems using Charles' law, we can use the formula V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2, where V stands for volume and T stands for temperature. The one represents the initial temperature and volume, which is the temperature and volume you are starting with, while the two represents the final temperature and volume, which is the temperature and volume you are ending with. It is important to note that for this formula, you need to make sure that your temperature values are always in Kelvin. If you use Celsius when solving this formula, you are going to get the wrong answer. Remember that to convert Celsius to Kelvin, you simply add 273 to the Celsius temperature. So now that you know what Charles' Law tells us, and you know the formula for Charles' Law, let's look at some practice problems. So remember, when we solve any gas law problem, the important thing is to first figure out what you are given, and that is then going to help you figure out what formula to use. So when I read this problem, I first see 600 milliliters, and I know that 600 milliliters is going to represent the volume because it is using the unit milliliters. I then see 20 degrees Celsius and 60 degrees Celsius, and that is going to represent temperature because degrees Celsius is a unit for temperature. The problem is then asking me to solve for the volume. So because I'm given volume and temperature in this problem, I need to pick out the gas law formula that has volume and temperature in it, and that would be Charles' law, which is V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Now that we know what formula we are using, we can simply pull the correct variables from the problem and plug them into our formula to solve for the answer. So this problem tells me that 600 milliliters of air is at 20 degrees Celsius, and it's asking what is the volume at 60 degrees Celsius. I know that 600 milliliters represents volume, so I'll plug that in for V1. I then know that 600 milliliters of air is at 20 degrees Celsius, so I'll plug 20 degrees Celsius in for T1. I'll then read on and the question is asking what is the volume? So I'm gonna solve for V2. And it's asking what is the volume of that gas at 60 degrees Celsius? I know degrees Celsius is temperature, so I'll plug in 60 degrees Celsius for T2. Now before we move on, it's important that we first convert the temperature to Kelvin. In order to do that, I'm just going to add 273 to both T1 and T2. That gives me a T1 of 293 and a T2 of 333. Now all I have to do is plug these numbers into the equation. I can plug in 600 for V1, 293 for T1, I'll leave V2 as it is because that's what I'm solving for. And then I can plug in 333 for T2. 
Whenever we solve this, we have to first cross multiply. So I'll cross multiply and do 600 times 333, and I'll do 293 times V2. And when I do this, that gives me 199,800 equals 293 V2. I then divide both sides by 293, and that would give me a V2 of 681.91 liters. Now, when we think about this in the terms of Charles' law, this answer should make sense. I'm looking at a temperature going up from 20 to 40 degrees. And I know that Charles' law tells me if the temperature increases, the volume will increase as well. And I see that in this problem. I started with a V1 of 600, and I ended with a V2 that is higher at 681.91 liters. So in our next problem, we're going to answer the question. During the day at 27 degrees Celsius, a cylinder with a sliding top contains 20 liters of air. At night, it only holds 19 liters. What is the temperature at night? Take a moment now and pause this video and see if you can solve the problem. Then come back and check your answer. So when I look at this problem, I'm given 27 degrees Celsius, which is temperature, and then 20 liters and 19 liters, which is volume. Because I'm given volume and temperature, I'm going to use the formula V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Now I just need to identify the variables and plug them into my equation. I'll start with 27 degrees Celsius, and that represents temperature. So I'll plug in 27 degrees Celsius for T1. Then I need to make sure I convert that to Kelvin, so I'll add 273 to get 300 Kelvin for T1. I'll then plug in 20 liters of air for V1. I know 20 liters represents volume because liters is a unit for volume. I'll then plug in the 19 liters for V2. This shows me I'm solving for T2. So I'll plug in 20 liters for V1, 300 Kelvin for T1, and I'll plug in 19 liters for V2. I'll then cross multiply to get 20 T2 equals 5,700. I will divide both sides by 20, and I'll get a T2 of 285 Kelvin. We can see here that the temperature has decreased. It started at 300 Kelvin and decreased to 285 Kelvin. And again, according to Charles' law, this makes sense. The volume was also decreasing. It went from 20 liters down to 19 liters. And when volume decreases, we also know the temperature has decreased as well. So in solving gas law problems, remember, it is important that you first look at the variables given in the problem. Once you identify the variables given, you can then choose the correct gas law formula to solve the problem. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like the video as this helps us reach more people. And here's another video to check out that will help you make science simple.